Hey guys, I wanted to share with you a conversation that I had with Ricky Sanchez. You probably recognize his name because I've dropped a few conversations with him before on this channel. And he and I are kind of doing a regular series just talking about what the new world looks like. What does it look like when we truly live and embody abundance, when we create from the belief that there's enough, that we're enough, instead of creating and living from the fear and the belief that there's not enough and we're not enough. So I'm excited to drop this conversation with you. Ricky was kind enough to do timestamps because it's a long conversation. So I, he let me use his timestamps. If you check in the description box below, you'll be able to see kind of what we talk about at each increment and see what you might be interested in listening to. But I think this is a pretty dope conversation and I would love to hear your thoughts. For those of you who are following this conversation, I would love to hear your thoughts and ideas in the comment section below. Also, lots of new content coming out. I will be doing some more conversations, but I'm also doing lots more readings, group readings, messages. I'm going to be putting meditations out, things like that. I've just been feeling a call to be more creative and artistic in how I use my YouTube channel in particular. So stay tuned for that. And then finally, I wanted to say for those of you who've been asking me about when the next shadow contract workshop is i'm actually doing a whole series on shadow contracts in the next couple months so how to um, dissolve shadow contracts in relationships in business in um, our creations with money all of it so i really feel like if we dissolved our shadow contracts we would truly be free from lack so i'm going to be giving a lot of content and we're doing a lot of workshops sort of like um what's the word i'm looking for retreat style uh, zoom workshop so stay tuned for that because i should be announcing that this weekend if you want to join one or all of them so all right i love you guys i hope you enjoy this conversation it's because i literally just drove so julia's grandma lives in palm springs mm -hmm. and so we just took the sunny ass drive all the way from san diego to palm springs only two hours oh. and so i just i just literally got here and oh, wow. i did i did not want to move this i did not want to do anything because of how this place makes me feel and then also how it ties into work and i was like no amanda is the one person that i want to talk to about this shit. I love you know it. what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. well i'm yeah. excited because right before um before we got on i was getting all these just really cool thoughts and my mm. everything was just spinning i was like oh this is revving me up to talk with ricky because i For can sure. feel something just is like ready and wanting to come through so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That's what happens to us, huh? We just get lit up. Yeah. Like literally, we just get lit up. <laughs> it's insane. So I'm curious, like what's been going on for you? I mean, okay. Big, big picture. I have consumed, I, I'm consuming right now, like probably 60 to 70% less than I'm used to consuming. Like, wow. like I'm on, I'm on your call. Sorry. You mean content wise? Content, content. Yeah. 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 And cannabis actually, oh, but that's yeah. kind of, yeah, I never, I actually haven't even thought about that right now. I am, I am consuming a little, oops, I'm consuming a little <clears throat> less cannabis, but no content wise, I'm just consuming less and it's a cycle thing. It's not something that I was like, Oh, I'm consuming too much. I want to change that. No, it's just like a very natural cycle thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I, one of my favorite creators is this guy named Rob Bell. I talk about him all the time. Yeah. And um, check him out. Cause every time you say the name, I'm like, I feel like I know that person. Like, well, in yeah. My world, but I've, I don't know, actually know who he is. <laughs> Anyone who is into the sanctity and the, and the beauty behind the message of an organized religion, mm -hmm. anyone who's into that beautiful, like prayer and like Christianity yet also is like, mm, bullshit to some things is going to love Rob Bell. Cause huh. he created a mega church in, um, the Midwest. And then he was just like, I was in meetings. He says this on his podcast. He was like, I, I was in meetings and they were talking about whatever. And I was thinking about quantum physics and how it relates to the church. And, and so he got, he sounds he, like my type of person. Oh, I'm telling you, Amanda, I think, so I think content wise, you'll enjoy him, but the way I enjoy him is actually, I just like the way he works in the world. I like the way he produces things like he's like hey i have a class this saturday and uh you know there's three there's gonna be 300 people on it whatever and it's just it's a zoom class just go, it's like you going it's like you being like hey guys i'm doing a pop-up shadow contract thing just me gonna go over because i feel really 20 bucks who wants to join you know and then tons of people are on it so i think 
I study him because I really like the way he moves in the world. But so he did one of these classes called how to create. And it's just like, you know, how to bring something in your mind to reality and like material. And one of the things he said is like, he learned that so much of his creative energy was going into support of other artists and like really diving into other artists and being like, just consuming, consuming. And he's like, that is so much sacred actual energy that I can put toward my book or toward my whatever. And so I was like, wow, that's coming in great timing because I was already having that download. I was pulling away from interviews and stuff. And then so this past week, I've just cut down on consumption and produced so much more. And it's brought like a really grounded feeling to me. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, my work, it like my life is my art and my life is my business. Mm-hmm. It's it's so, so rad. Yeah. 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 yeah, I was actually just talking about that in, I think, the live for the Abundance Matrix group. Mm-hmm. But I was saying how one of the biggest shifts I realized when my when my content just started picking up momentum and my mm. audience started growing was when I just became more fascinated with myself above anyone totally, else. Totally, totally. I stopped consuming. And even now, I rarely consume other information. Right. And, and it's not that it's like, or I'll just do tiny bits, but I'm, I feel like I'm so zoning into my lane that it's almost a distraction mm-hmm. to, to dive too deeply into any other content or like mm-hmm. have my mind out there studying anything out there. It's like, I'm studying me and it's totally. like the most fascinating journey I've ever taken, you know? Totally. Yeah. Well, I'm in the middle of creating, um, products that have an end like I'm creating a journal right now I'm creating a line of journals and you're yes yes and so they're beautiful and they're just like they are what they need to be you know and I found myself having starting so many cool projects that are so me you know but then I would listen to a podcast and it would be so true it would be so like wow that is such truth and I would go try to implement that new truth to something that already had a beginning and end Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. My stuff never felt like it was going to ever materialize. So I'm like that I need to finish these things and then I can consume new when I'm, you know, Rachel Jensen actually helped me with that. She was like, she was like, everything has a cycle. It's all a cycle. You know, there's like gathering, she says, you know, isolation. um, I think explore or like uh, showing it. um, What's it called? Performing it, whatever. And then celebrating. Mm -hmm. So, so I think I was in gather for like a really long time. And now I'm just like in production, 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 you know? Yeah. So I open myself up to things that I feel like I can spread my wings a little bit more, mm-hmm. which is like the tantric group. That's why that still feels like something I, I'm plugged into. You know, I feel, it feels yeah. like something that just like allows me to, allows all of us to do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a cool space. I'm this particular round for me. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm shaping it at such a, it's like a core level for me. It's like, I'm starting to know what it is that I'm actually doing in that. Mm -hmm. So it's an, Mm -hmm. it's like a different kind of round for me because I, I kind of really am again in, in here so deep figuring out what it, what my tech is and how, how to leverage it and what part of my tech is the most relevant for the Mm -hmm. group and what I'm doing. And you know what Mm -hmm. I mean? All those Mm -hmm. things like really feeling into it. So it's been a cool, it's been a cool space, but I feel the thing that I, some, somewhere along the line in the last like two to three weeks, I shifted into this space of like, I'm in it. I'm in the new, I feel like I'm in the new world. Totally. I can feel the pulse of the creations that are coming. And I almost, I feel like this, it's like on the edge of excitement, but also realizing like it's, it's so about slowing down right now because mm-hmm. divine timing is at play and being lined up really, truly lined up, like with the whole self, with totally. the bottom of heart, lining our whole Trinity up to like the, what's about to unfold because totally. I feel the split too. Like there are every reality is going to play out it, and every person's going to experience whatever they're the most resonant match to and that mm. so a lot of people are shifting because they're getting the intuition jump 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 and so they're like whoa I'm done with this black matrix and a lot of people are jumping you know mm-hmm. so, I don't know I just feel this really cool energy and I was actually pulling I have to show you these while I'm thinking about it oh, sweet, yeah. on the call I I heard pull one of these oh um, sweet 
literary it's all about artists you know what I mean yeah, it's artists yeah, yeah. and their tools um like writers and their tools but two tools came out so it's like some cards are writers and some t- cards are tools These okay are cool came out and I thought this is me and you this is just what a wild fl- wildflowers and, spider. and spider oh yes 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 and there's something about like the weaving and I feel like this is what we're doing in the tantric entrepreneur group like mm-hmm. we're setting a vibe we're weaving it we have to mm-hmm. be like a spider that's so perceptible to resonance and vibration like mm-hmm. that's a spider tech you know mm-hmm. like you mm-hmm. a web dang but then this like this to me this is that even though this would be more of like a feminine vibe this reminds yeah. me yeah like you you're totally. like wildflowers totally I feel that I 100% yeah. feel that I and feel I, like oh go ahead you're gonna say I was just gonna say and this feels like me to me but no I I totally agree and I almost feel like it's that um that Scorpio vibe a little bit yeah. I was just talking about this with someone the Scorpio vibe kind of gives like a the house it would be in in, in uh Harry Potter would be Slytherin I was just having this conversation and it's not a bad thing like the black matrix wants to make it out to be but it is that like spider like hmm, like what, what's going on with you but yes. you are so high tech and like spiders also have to know where to weave not only how to weave the web but where to weave the web mm-hmm. you know what I mean like yeah. so, so for example you going out and doing community outreach at the local whatever where you're at just doesn't feel as yeah. high tech as what you're doing so you're like I'm throwing this out online like you're very much, have you ever seen the OA? Uh-uh. Okay, okay. Well, anyone who's watched the OA knows what I'm talking about. She basically goes on YouTube. She, she comes from this different world. Literally, she comes from a different dimension. And she's like, she's like, I don't know how this dimension works, whatever, whatever. She puts a, a video out on YouTube and is like, I need you to meet me tomorrow at the house at whatever. And she doesn't even say what type of person. She just says you. And, any, and then they show up. So I'm like, that is you you know exactly where you're weaving the web Mm -hmm. and your your way of weaving since I've seen since I've started to really hone in on your energy is just like getting more and more and more and more like um pinpointed yeah it's getting fine-tuned super fine-tuned happening and I feel Mm -hmm. Like in my life, I've wondered for like my whole twenties and thirties, I was like jumping grids. I was all over mm-hmm. the place. I was in, I lived in Italy and I lived in Portland and I was in New Mexico for a while. Mm-hmm. And I lived in Sacramento and then Sedona. And I was like, I felt like I was in all these grids and I never quite understood what I was doing or I could never ultimately see the bigger picture because I was like, I didn't know what my tech was and what I was totally. doing, but I would download, I, I, when I was in these spaces, I would feel like I would get the emotional imprint of the space Mm -hmm, and I would mm -hmm. go and I could I it's like I I don't know I could read each grid like a very specific kind of vibe and Mm. I feel like what I was doing is getting a link I was really getting studying like something about humanity and the way I don't know I it's it's I'm still unfolding like the codes that I got but Mm. what I feel like I know is this like the resonance of what we're, what we're urging for, at least what I'm urging for and people are in my field are urging for mm-hmm. something about being able to hold that resonance, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but what I've realized too, through this group and through the, through all the groups I've done really, but especially the abundance matrix mastermind and this group in particular, because this group gets really, we're getting even more fine tuned into entrepreneurs and art. I know, and I know. Creators. And yeah. I'm like, whoa, I never knew that was my vibe of people because I didn't consider myself an artist, even though like I, everything I did in school, I always loved sing, singing, dance. Um, the cho- I was in choir. I, I, love, I loved the arts. I studied English in college, but I never considered myself an artist because I, I didn't feel like I, I didn't know what my thing was. Like I wasn't mm-hmm. a early, it's like a jack of all trades sort of person, but I'm realizing like this is my art mm-hmm. it's an art I've never seen. And I, and mm-hmm. there's other people that are, well, first of all, that I'm weaving a web that's catching people catching mm-hmm. people in particular, and that mm-hmm. we're doing something like this to me, like mm-hmm. wildflowers, you know what I mean? Like spreading the seed of beauty, just kind of where it, where it grows up naturally and actually mm-hmm. where it's just going to come up naturally. This is what I feel like, like your vibe when you came in, Mm. for for the space like pollinated it kind of you know what I yeah. mean yeah like spread the pollen and yes. and get it and then like I don't know this artistic 
vibe is getting activated. And I'm seeing like on one hand in the abundance matrix mastermind, the absolute genius. Some people are just freaking geniuses in that group. Mm-hmm. Geniuses in the way that my mind works as well, where it's not necessarily, unless you have someone else that can reflect it back to you and talk to you, and right. you're like, well, we see the same thing. It's like right. you cannot unravel your genius until someone you connect with other people who see the same world as you. you right. Know? Right. And there's like, like I said, people like you, who I, I feel like are, you're bringing it in like, you're bringing a different grid, a different part of the grid, you know, to like mm-hmm. to, to do this to it, like beautify it, totally, like beautify it and make it like, like who doesn't want to hang out in a field of wildflowers, you know? Like, right, I know. This that. <laughs> it's because it's kind of hard to believe from going from one world to the other. It's kind of hard to believe that you can just lay in a field of wildflowers and still be, you know, good, like still be you. Yeah. yeah. So, so I love your way of reading. I love that you've pulled more cards, more and more and more and more and more. Yes, it's still huge right now. Because it's what you just said about um, you having someone else communicate with you pulls out a whole new level of your own, of you personally, your own tech. Yeah. So now it's kind of like you're doing that with the cards. At least that's what I see. Yeah. You're like, you're working with them to bring this, this gnarly message, which I, I love too. And you're also, you're like me in that. I don't want to necessarily go down the road. I don't feel particularly called to go down the road of honing in on that. Like I read tarot for people or like whatever. I just like dance with that, you know, like I just understand them and I can like bring them to life or whatever. Same with crystals, same thing. I don't necessarily want to go down just the lane of just, you know, it's just, it's, it's exploration using tools like that. Well, I also feel like you, part of your gifts too are very related to like what you did when you were in the nine to five world, like mm, oh yeah, setting the tone for the party. Like mm-hmm. so it makes sense that you, you, people like you almost need to like have a, a wide range of access to everything. So you can mm-hmm. feel good for everyone. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it makes yeah. sense that if you, if you way too finely like went into crystals or tarot or anything like that, it, it doesn't really fit with, with your your like mastery of making the room comfortable for everyone mm, you know what mm, I mean? like, totally so totally you can pull it in here and there when you need it and 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 not just here and there but I feel like with crystals in particular maybe it's mm. just because of how I was introduced to you but like mm. I remember that first reading and how I saw so clearly you were one of those people that came in when my brain was like oh yeah this person who has this tech even though I've mm. never seen it before I know the tech and I knew it and I knew what you did and I saw I saw like the power of being able to just um, evoke the an essence of a crystal, even without even having the crystal. Uh-huh. And that's when I was like, yes. oh, coding astral spaces. And then you were like, I worked in the the club world, you know, like, so I was like, whoa, like that's it. I yeah. see how uh-huh. it connected. And also like, you can take those exact skills and, and create an astral grid from, from like the totally. astrals down to physical reality. You know what I mean? Oh man, yeah. You know, for someone like me, that like witness is like. I mean, that would normally make me like when when our when we first started our like collaborative relationship, that would easily make me emotional because, for you to see something like that in me is crazy, you know. But because of the work that you do and this group and me feeling more just in that lane, it's just like it feels more grounded so that's what makes me want to open up my computer and just start crafting things that feel like that Mm -hmm. you know that have an end and that have a you know that are nuanced and have layers and stuff so but using that thing and I think with crystals the reason why it's easiest for me to do that with them is because with tarot or like with any other kind of divination tool I can do it with how do I explain this I would have to pull the essence of tarot itself, not just the card. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I'll be like, tarot brings an overall this kind of energy. But Mm -hmm. for some reason with crystals, it's like they're all a tarot. They're all tarot. Like like this type of crystal is its own. You know what I mean? It's almost like they're not blanketed. They're not blanketed as crystals. At least that's the way I see them. They're all their own. You know, it's like it's like humans. Yes. That's what I see it, you know. Mm-hmm. Ah, you 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 pick that you pick up on that, but I don't have words to yeah. fin- finish or finish that. But you know what I mean. Well, what's interesting to me is, and for some reason, this comes up every time we talk about crystals because I know that because of stereotypes and because of 
whatever that that crystals can be stereotyped with people like us in an in a in a way that's like seems woo or whatever. Mm, mm-hmm. But one thing that you keep activating in me is this this like importance of it's weird because as I'm saying it, I see these crystals just lighting up, but all of uh, in these different spaces, the importance of remembering the tech. Yes. Crystal, and that it's an intuitive technology. It, it's connected to so many things, but ultimately it's data. Mm-hmm. And people who, like there's an, there's an, there are some people who are just more uh, natural at receiving that data. And if you can translate it, you don't even have to even talk about crystals. Even if it's in your repertoire where you know, like they're like, they want to work with you on a deeper level. Mm-hmm. And I think that it, there are other people that probably are listening to this that actually that's have a very similar call. It's a, it is a specialty, it, mm-hmm. but it doesn't have to be, it can be totally behind the scenes, like your totally. kind of craft. Totally. You know? But I feel like for some reason, crystals like want to communicate and especially with those who can read them. Yes. Oh you know? my God. Ex- exactly. Amanda, like, you know the 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 uh, popular the popular version of what we're saying, or the the mainstream welcomed version, is feng shui. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like like my okay. So my journal that I'm making, I I don't know if I'm gonna actually put this in the journal, but it was created by three crystals plus me. Mm-hmm. You know, I it's the same. So so for example, let's say I'm answering emails, or let's say I'm working on a, a different creative project B. I'm working on project B. Once I want to go back to project A, which is this journal, I go and get those same three crystals because it's the essence plus they're helping, they're either helping me pull the essence through or we're collaborating all four of us mm-hmm. and, um, and we're creating this thing together. So you're right. Like it doesn't mean I'm going to be a crystal healer necessarily, but it is imprinted in all of my work. Exactly. And it's powerful. Yeah. And yeah. I think that um, there's the, something that Kinsey has been working with me on as we've been talking about my brand and what that mm-hmm. even is and like exploring that universe. She's put it into language that work better for me than brand, but she's talked mm-hmm. a lot about my universe and like creating a mood board for my universe. How does it feel? How does it feel when people are in it? And for mm-hmm. me, that's when crystals get activated instantly. As like, I have to go all the way out to the edges and, mm-hmm. and like, these certain crystal frequencies want to be there because they simply evoke something for me that activates something in my resonance that Mm. makes that more of the equation for me Mm. instead of like whatever. So, so, and I think this is true with any association, but there's, there's a master craft to astral creations when we create from like Mm. that space all the way in and then Mm -hmm. out, Mm -hmm. you know? And, Mm -hmm. and so there's something uh, there's something about people who can evoke the energy of that really strongly in their field with, because oh. people do have a very particular frequency. They're, yeah. they're related to tech. I mean, quite literally, we know the first radio was a quartz crystal and that right. crystals in our smartphones and like, they're part of tech. Yes. It's, it's, it's untapped territory, but I think multi-sensory people could do so much more in terms of shifting algorithms um mm. magic what we would call magic if we think of it like programming and if you can mm-hmm. access the that kind of grid with those frequencies and work with them and evoke those energies in your field there's something going on that's so much bigger than we can even understand that's connected to the multi-dimensional internet totally my god yeah i honestly i i can imagine and i can i would love if this was a whole new um entrance into a whole new uh, I want to say album because that's what I think of as my work is like album, album, album. I'm in my sophomore album. I feel like for you, shadow contracts, urge, uh, lack, abundance, all these things, it is a really huge album for you. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, and I'm wondering what is like eventually what the next iteration or album or something will be like, you know, but it's going to be a whole new level of what you've yep. already. And so I kind of feel like when, I don't know, the energy that you, you just channeled, whatever you just said, by the way, because you were just going. And so whatever, selfishly, I'm like, keep going with that because yeah. you're helping people like me who have this understanding innately, but not really words, not yeah. really, you know what I mean? I only have words to it when someone like you comes in my life. Right, for sure. Yeah, because yeah. It, 
I feel like people like you and, and people who are listening, who are resonating with this need permission. It's like, it's oh yeah. Something we yeah. Just, and it, and I feel like what wants to come through is that just like, give yourself total permission to go into your tech because you haven't seen it before. We talked about mm-hmm. this. Last time. It's not something that you can look around you and find someone else doing not to say there's not other people doing it, but most people who get that specialized, they're not out there talking about it because that mm-hmm. pulls holes in their creation because mm-hmm. the collective mind is not there and they don't get it. Mm-hmm. So why even mm-hmm. that energy in? All that matters is that you track with what you know. Yeah. And like let it light you up. Let it, cause you'll feel it in your resonance. Your field gets bigger and bigger. And it's, it's part of, um, it's also part of, so if, if you evoke a really strong crystal energy in your field, you, it, that, that, that signature alone is full of data and everything mm. that we collectively associate with that, including and interpreted through your, the way you like interact with the energy signature of it. Like the fact mm. that you even appreciate it and love it, tiger, right. that, for example. like when you yeah. bring it in and you love it, that, that, op- like that opens the signal even more. Like you've given more permission for that signal in your field. So more data comes through oh yes oh I just got chills everywhere yes yeah and that's what I meant about um scrambling signals because we part of the reason why people are collectively asleep like the collective mind of humanity is not does not remember what it is is because it's been in trauma and there's all these lines of energy that aren't getting they're not communicating and so we're not getting the neural pathways firing in our normal way that they're fired. So something about people who can evoke crystals because crystals carry data and crystals have information about the story of what we actually really are and all the quote unquote history that we've lost. We didn't lose it at all. We have it in our bodies and we have it in our bodies, you know, there's like, it's all connected. So something about that quantum field of astronomical abundance is connected to your direct knowing whether you know why you know it or not right I feel like it's also coming from your sacral area like you're feeling a pulse there Mm. that like that it that's almost how you know you know totally totally like just where are you being called and go straight into it and it's it's like because at this level we're traveling via resonance it's the quickest way to manifest Mm. And that's why the logical linear, okay, do this and then do this and then do this starts becoming less relevant. It, mm. it, it's more relevant retrospect because the human mind wants to understand right. the middle end. So then right. we're like, oh, this is how it began. This is kind of what I figured out in the middle. This is the end. And yes. I'm cycle. Yes. But like, while you're in it, you, it won't necessarily be linear or make any sense because we're talking right. multidimensionality at this point, you know? Right, right. And I have, okay, so, and I have totally eased up on myself about trying to fucking understand all of it because of exactly that I have that innate knowing too that it's just like I'm moving at a different I'm moving with some different tools now you know what I mean the tools are different the the laws are different here you know it's different so with that you that's why sometimes I say can everyone just pause there's too many metaphors in this one in this one social situation can everyone pause I need to write them down you know and then I need to like make something out of all of them because when you when you truly believe like this when you truly settle into whatever gear you need to settle into here it's like I feel like downloads come but they don't they come in the way this world works which is time is time and space aren't as linear as the 3d right so like i get downloads sometimes about things that i'm going to be doing in like 10 years and for a while i started working on those things because i was like oh god well does that mean i have to work on them now so that what you just channeled is like a confirmation for me that oh okay those are things that you write in your journal and you just like close because it's coming it's coming you know so that so so to circle way back to where you asked me like how I was in the beginning is like, that's why I have shifted into a gear where I just feel comfortable with what's coming in the next month Mm -hmm. work-wise. Like, what am I like, like for you, like for your, for your group, like what call am I going to have next week? Like, what can I cook up that feels like really good for the the kids to hear today? Like it's that kind of energy Mm -hmm. versus like, okay, I have that going. I have that going. I have that going. It's like, yes, it's all going, but it's going at the pace it can here in form yep. so exactly well yeah. and 
the fact that there's so much new happening and we collectively are at a pause, we don't know what's going to happen. And a lot of people are projecting worst case scenario, but then there's people getting activated like you mm. that are just like, so getting activated in their gift and getting so honed in. And that's the part that nobody sees because that's not being mm -hmm. televised or on media or unless you're tuned in, you don't know. So you don't have the data of what's like mm -hmm. actually going on in the underbelly of these new grid, grid workers that are like actually have influence and actually are waking up, you know? So there's totally. huge shifts in algorithms happening and it's going to shock people because it's like that, that's that time of like innovation and mm. the Renaissance. Mm. But what I was going to say is that, let me get back to it because it's important what okay, you just said. Okay. You, you, there was two things. You said metaphor, like I'm, I have to slow down and mm -hmm. there's too many metaphors going on. Mm -hmm. What I heard when you said that is that metaphor is one of the languages of programming and yes. hack to manifesting. Yes, Amanda. Yes. yes. That's so, why poetry is a thing. Yes, exactly. yes, poetry yeah. matters. It matters yes. so much and slowing way, way, way down like we've been talking about. Oh, this is where it comes full circle to is I think for people that are in this space like you and I are in and I just feel it, that pulse of the new, it's like, it's new. So the best, the most potent way we can, we can hone in is like in the moment. And like, hey, this week, what's my, what, what, how do I want to flirt with this day? This right, week? right. You know what I mean? And I want to get so like honed in instead of projecting too much into the future or even trying to plan too much into the future right now. Because totally. there's, there's too much of, we, there's a huge ass piece that none of us know. Right. So it's like we, and, and the ego wants to control everything and even how business is done, like project five years out, do your 10 year plan, do the, have everything in your life. So planned out. So you, you know, what's going and you're driving your life, but this game is a little different. It's like, no, like play with you, know, the universe, play with source. Play I'm with getting chills. Like literally everywhere. It's freaking insane. Like sometimes I think that when we are both like out of all of our conversations today, the stars aligned where you and I were both in a gear that we're like, oh yeah, we're doing some good shit right now. Yeah, you I know? knew right before I got on, I was yes. like excited about this call. Well, even me, I like this morning, we left a little later to come down than I wanted to. And we basically just got here, but I was like, no, no, no. It, it, th this call it, and where I'm at right now in Palm Springs, this beautiful place with, you know, with my computer talking to my friend, but also like posting this. And it's also all tying in. That is a metaphor of, this world so I'm like uh, I don't even know how I can pull that one through other than just this conversation which I also think the third player at play here between me and you is our conversation our conversation itself okay. is it is a crystal it, it, yeah it's its own thing it's not even just a crystal it's like its own human mm -hmm. it's weird mm -hmm. you know it's crazy really like my creative brain goes to like we could make that a uh, character do you know what I mean and that's how characters come about like that's how fiction becomes a thing you know so that's like I've been for for I would say about four years now getting just huge downloads of of um like characters for shows mm -hmm. like it's like done cartoon but beautiful and all these metaphors and this language of multi-dimensionality is told mm. but through but through metaphor through poetry through like visuals in terms of quantum physics like I totally. know that's one of the next iterations for me is actual like creating stories like visual stories because the, oh you, my god you need to see it you know yes okay so that is what I was talking about thank you for helping me hone in on that with you specifically because I don't I think I think there's a bunch of different levels to creation like the, the spider card that you pulled mm -hmm. you, I feel like you're really learning and you're really um hope you're really feeling grounded in your art form right now which is your work really you're your yeah. business is your art form. It's crazy. And then you're, and it makes total sense because you're actually teaching that too. Yeah. Which yeah. eventually I want to get to your understanding. Well, I'll, I'll pause on that for now. But um, so second iteration, I mean, would be like creation that isn't so on the nose. And I cannot wait to see what that is for Amanda. Yes, you're going to have to partner with the right people that have the, the, ability, the technical abilities, but that's everybody. You know what I mean? Like the, either it's a director or like a whatever, whatever, but I can't wait to see that, that level of artistry come from you. Yes. And basically yeah. I feel like you're just doing this first because you're calling in your peeps. You're yeah. like, okay, great, great, great. You're, you're literally 
weaving a web. It's so cool. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I've realized that like for the truth is, is that for my vision to ultimately come together, it's like everyone else needs to put it, like actually make it happen. And I have to hold the vision mm-hmm. and like, and like activate people. Like that's mm-hmm. what I realized. And mm-hmm. for a long time, I resisted against that because I thought I, I had to do it all, you know? And I, I was the universe of just has been so clear about no, like you have to hold the vision and just continue to move forward with it. Mm. Allow us to bring in all the working components. And that's mm. the part I was resisting for a long time, just because relationally I was working through shadow contracts. So right. I didn't have the, I didn't, I wasn't ready to actually create with people at the level that I, that's required for this, 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 this kind of birthing of, I feel like yeah. it's the birthing of a world, you know? No, so, totally, totally, totally. So now that's coming together and that it's just so cool to feel confident and like, shadow contracts have been huge because I would have never, it would have been, it wouldn't have been this. My vision has to be done in the win, 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 or it doesn't work. Totally. So, And I was, and it wasn't a win before. And and, and most of the other things I tried to co-create just simply because I wasn't in truly in alignment with my urge, you know? Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. that's why I just feel so grateful for Rachel Jensen and Emily Modkus that who've Mm -hmm. both been, Emily has the more like the poetic side of urge Mm -hmm. and you know, the, the actual, just like moving it forward side of urge, but both of them, I, I feel like in the work that I've done with both of them have been huge in yeah. being like the two parts I needed be get poetic, huge, get poetic with my life because my life is like, my life is my art and my art is my life. So exactly. They, I couldn't separate them. And I realized like, I can't, my job isn't this job on the side that I just do. And then I have my life. It's like, my job is my life. So how can mm-hmm. I marry that? And poetry was the answer for that. Totally. Rachel was like, get primal. Yeah. Get primal and like, get connected, get like, get out of your head and into your body. Cause I was mm-hmm. up here for a long time, just in my channeling, but totally. not expressing it in, in, in the body. And that's the big part that Rachel has been so key in for me is just like, get in your body get in totally your, have sex totally. have more sex oh and then totally. have more sex that yes so you know hers was like have sex please all babe. of it all of it <laughs> and walk barefoot more often uh-huh. that's yep. what she told me she's like walk barefoot just more often like be more be more aware of your the, the edges of your physical body yeah mm-hmm. you yeah. know exactly. so I like I like I love hearing about your relationship with Emily and Rachel because I kind of feel like you guys are like a, a triangle like a strong shape and almost like Charlie's Angels vibes. You know what I mean? Like you guys are all, because I'm sure Rachel has her, this whole, this whole concept of, I'm kind of, I'm kind of zooming out now on this convo because like this whole concept of tribe is such a thing. And it's so obvious that you're in my tribe. I'm in your tribe. We're of, we're of the same tribe. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, poke your head out onto the crazy internet and you'll see another group of people doing exactly this in there in another way. Yep. You know, they're figuring it out in their own way or whatever. And so I just like the way how I just like how nuanced tribes are because everyone plays a different part in your in your experience. Like you, Rachel and Emily feel like you all kind of like help each other, like almost like session wise, mm-hmm. but also you work together. You also like collaborate together, you yeah. know, and then you have a whole group of people that you like really help coach. And then some of those people come through and like create with you, too. I don't know. It's just. It yeah. kind of reminds me of like Marvel and and I love Marvel so much, regardless of whatever Marvel is actually. I just love the concept of like superpowers and 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 like, OK, for this battle, we need like the Hulk and um, uh, Captain America. And for this battle, we need like the Hulk and Iron Man, because that makes more sense mm-hmm. for this battle. Ricky and Amanda and they, what they evoke makes total you know, more sense and not battle. It's more like for this mountain to climb. Ricky and Amanda makes sense to go there for this one, Rachel and Amanda, that is what we need. You know, like I could, I, yeah. And that kind of feels like knowing what crystals to pull together. Totally. So it's all the same, like, it's all the same thing. And it, I think it's so important, especially in co-creating with others is to, it's easier said than done, but it, it's can be, it can be difficult sometimes to let it just the creation be its own thing. 
Because totally. we may think it needs to go one way, but the, the actual entity of it is doing its own thing for reasons we may not even know. But right. if you make it personal, it can, again, it's a shadow contract part. Right. So like get, right. Right. get too involved in it and think, oh, well, why wasn't I in that part? Or how can I do, you know, or like I wasn't good enough or compare ourselves to others or whatever. Right. And that's why sovereignty is so key. To me, like the, the co-creations that are going to create heaven on earth, They've got to be done in sovereignty. They've got to be done according to the win, 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 win for everyone, self, others in the planet. That's a thing. And yeah. I, think I see it as like businesses even taking that model in and saying, we're going to create our whole business model around the win, win, win. It's mm-hmm. a win for the whole. We're, we're, it won't be a win for any of us if it's not also a win for the planet, if mm-hmm. it's not also a win for our consumers, and if it's not also a win for us. Everyone mm-hmm. should benefit in the equation. Mm-hmm. And the lack matrix always has to fuck someone over. Yeah. And so we're like programmed to expect in many ways war in creation. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. And I think that's why I think the, just the universe stopped me and God source, whatever, and was like, this has got to be clear mm-hmm. or nothing you say will ultimately manifest as, as it's evidence of its own self. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. shadow contracts have got to be dissolved. You've got to be sovereign. And that the biggest part for me was really having to let go of feeling responsible for everything and feeling responsible for, for how people felt and, you know, all of that has been so, so it's like these simple things, but it's amazing how not having sovereignty was holding in many ways, like holding back my art. You know? Right. Yeah. And like, that's something I just have like the biggest spot in my heart for, for women particularly, because I think that on a bigger scale, you do feel like you have to show up a certain type of way mm-hmm. to make sure the other person is nurtured. Yeah, because you take care of the home like you take care of the me and Julia were just talking about this and of course there's beauty to all of that too but when it gets spun out of control and you're just trying to get a seat at the table and you Mm -hmm. take care of every person sitting at the table there's no creativity left there's no sexuality left so I love what you're doing with shadow contract and it also makes sense too well I learned I learned shadow contracts from you like instantly like it was not something I had to go and study like that's why I didn't feel I don't like if you were to do another workshop or whatever it's not something I need to keep going and diving into because I think my natural inherent masculine energy if channeled right is like okay so just don't be bothered by that okay great so for example I've already told myself in my business if 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 one of your friends and you want to create something and it's so rad it's such a good idea and then last minute they're like but you know what I think this is like my thing, or I think this, or something gets pulled out. Mm -hmm. That is because that is the best thing for that. Mm -hmm. You can't be mad at any of that stuff. You can't because in order for, and this is just goes back to generosity, which like my parents taught me from, they taught me just by being, it's like the more you actually have your arms open and say like, okay, I'm going to give here. And someone might come and totally steal my idea totally steal it and run with it but like no one can do it like you duh because yeah, exactly. you're the source you're, you're the source of it so yeah. I yeah so so just an interesting point in that is like because I was able to learn shadow contract stuff so early it has so early and so easily it wasn't hard for me to learn that it's helped me with so many things have fallen through um since I've been out of the nine to five like oh, okay maybe I'll help you consult on that thing maybe I'll help you consult on that thing I've had like three things outside of all of this world that we're in and they just timing isn't right. And I'm like, eh, whatever. It makes sense. I'm going to, I'm going to keep, I'm going to print my, my line of journals. I'm going to keep with my business going forward, you know? Yep. So it's a really, really good lesson to learn. And it is really, really, oh man, I wish I could just give the people a pill that will just dissolve that for them, you know, which is just, don't yeah, worry it's about it. Part. It's a huge yeah. part of what holds creations back <sighs> because we get attached to our own vision of how we think mm-hmm. it should be or we, we get attached to our timing or, our, and, and the, the thing itself has its own life and, and it, it's including things we don't yet see or understand. And that's the part where it's like, not to take it personal if totally. something falls through or if, totally. if, if it looks different than it, when you're, you thought it was going to look, but something about, like you said, and I think it's a code, it's an abundance mm-hmm. code is just like, stay it with is a code. Like, it is. With the moment, you know, yeah. and you like, Hey, like you said, well, I'm going to focus on this week. 
Right. To me, this day, this week, even this this round of the Tantric Entrepreneur Group, I've kept wanting to have it all pre-done and like I have this these big ideas to have it all mostly done. Right. Before I even started, and then Christy and I were talking, and I realized like first of all, I have to feel into the group because the needs really what I do is feel into the pulse of the group, a huge part of it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And what we're, I want it to be relevant to what we're co-creating and to what uh-huh. we're reaching into and expanding into. And so I needed to like, I, this new round, it's like, I felt people kind of coming in and like, like their resonance kind of shifting into the group. And the whole time I was just like feeling, feeling, feeling. And Christy was just like, let's just take it week by week. Like totally week. Let's just, instead of, instead of feeling like you have to have the whole thing pre-done, like, and that's been so much more, that's I don't good. Know, just like, that's good. A lot better for me mentally to be able to just take it week by week and to, and to get really into it and flirt with it, you know? Yeah. I think the only suggestion I would give you is to get more comfortable with that. The way that you're naturally, totally. the way you're naturally like I, cause I've been in iteration one, two and three mm-hmm. and each of them have had the magic of it, which is you, you're the magic. Yeah. But you or you even to be, a, if, if you want, cause you're a humble person, you always take it more humbly. The mat that you, what you evoke, what you bring to the group isn't that structure. Like, here's the thing. You've made some structural changes that have really helped the groups flow, which is dope. Yes. Amazing. But that's not why people are signing up. Yeah. Like, so I would just like, I, actually I was talking to Christy about this too. I was like, I love that Amanda is like still down last minute to be like, ah, that was programmed for week six, but it just doesn't make sense for week six. Yeah. And I think it's because you see so far ahead. So you try to make this like nice little landscape out for everybody, but you're like, oh, timing worked differently. So I personally think that you are handling that spot on. Thank I think you. if it was more structured and I think if it was more like, okay, because so, then then you wouldn't show up. You yeah. wouldn't show up the way that you show up to this conversation right here. Yep, exactly. And then that's that's the whole thing. That is the whole point. Yes, that's what working with Sandy on human design and her doing my human design also helped me really see is that that's part of how I work. Like I, mm-hmm. I need to be spontaneous and I need yeah. to be free and in the moment because that's how my inspiration comes through. And so if I overstructure myself or even over plan, right. I'm being really good with my schedule. And now Megan said this, so she talked about flirting with your calendar, like flirting mm-hmm. with your schedule. And I loved that. And I'm like, I, when I look at my schedule, I want to feel good about it. And I want totally. to find this freedom in it if I don't have at least two days during the week where I have nothing that I have to do yeah it, it, nothing else like everything starts feeling muffled and foggy and like and then I don't show up in anything as well you know yes, yes. so I feel like a huge part of what the tantric entrepreneur experience or experiment is teaching me is is how to get in rhythm with my urge really right. I'm in a flow with my urge and I'm seeing directly of how when I do it things just sort of magically happen totally in their way and everyone's go. This is the thing that's really clear to me is because we have, we're working with online. It's not like we're meeting in person. Everyone is in a, such a different place at different times, doing different things. People are watching it at their own time. We're not all on the same linear schedule as it is. Mm-hmm. You're trying to have it too linear in a group of people that are all on different schedules. It feels like more than anything, the resonance is what needs to be stabilized more than the schedule itself. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I love for your brand that you kept it an experiment, yeah. you know, I would even go as it continues to go more and more and more and more evolved. Like, I think it can also change into an experience. Yeah. I keep saying that word too on accident. So it's kind of there anyway. Totally. Because, you know, like you said, it's this one feels bigger, like the biggest snowball it's ever been. And it feels like, whoa, almost a little, like, almost like, out of control and like a little chaos but that's the whole point we have to remember that's the whole point it's supposed to because all imagine all that suppression for so long and then all of a sudden not one person gets seen not two but like 30 40 50 people get seen all at once Mm -hmm. how is that going to be a smooth thing it's not so that's what I mean I kind of see you as like this like you're kind of just moving it like okay now we're going this way people now we're going this way but nothing is structured because yep. all of the people in the group are like, no structure. We're like, no, yeah. you know, like, or not no structure, but no oppression, no, yep. pre- no oppression. Well, and I'm sort of urging for an even deeper level of that, that I want to be able to have it a little more intimate, but I'm realizing that would require it to be more like the, the, that 
almost out of control snowball feeling is this because the group doubled right. just from round two to round three it doubled right. so I I'm like I've realized like okay this is already becoming its own thing because the more people the more vibe the more the more moving pieces there are the more moving parts and like you said when people are getting seen and witnessed and experiencing things they've never experienced in many ways it's like you can catapult and then you have the pullback and then you mm. have like, and everyone kind of goes through their own cycle of dealing with their own lack beliefs that come up that they're, mm -hmm. and, and in a group of empaths, it's key to be sovereign because mm -hmm. it's easy to then go into the like feeling where we slip into that, taking care of each other or, yeah. or just getting out of our own urge. And so I love, I love the sovereignty I've allowed myself in this space. Yeah. That I can feel that like, Ooh, like I'm even kind of like, oh, okay, what do I do with this at this point? Cause I don't know that I want it to be any bigger and right. if it's any bigger, I have to take more of a step back from it. You know what I mean? Like from an energy standpoint, but I still want to funnel my energy deeply, more intimately into something. Yes. So kind of like the iteration we've been talking about where maybe people work with, with all of us and yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. craving that deeper deeper communion level with like a small group of people as well you know okay well here's some encouragement for you because the first iteration got deep to a place where it could hold 50 more people in my opinion it didn't go deeper to where this is really for like an like a ayahuasca ceremony for like 20 people it didn't go there which yeah. is perfect which meant there can be more people in it so yep. more people came so i think that if this group turns into a funnel for people to come through and feel this whirlwind of energy. You can't be mad at that, right? Because that's the whole thing. It created itself. It's created. And then it's a portal. It's exactly what it feels like. It's a portal. And then that's when Amanda masterminds and is like, okay, well now I'm craving this because you crave the experiment in the first place. Then you go into something else. And then that pulls the people who are ready for that level in. Because yeah. not everyone who's in that group not we're not all at the same place which is yeah. the most beautiful thing like i mean some people are just realizing that they haven't been themselves for 40 years mm -hmm. and then some people have been doing this type of work for 40 years yeah so exactly. it's just it's just all over the place it is yeah, yeah. yeah. it definitely feels like it's gonna have its own second it like yes. next level or next part of the of the final. Yeah. i love this space and i love what it's becoming and it just feels like it's swirling through my energy body right now That's right right and then there's some people in there specifically, just their energy signatures that are, that are that like that are moving to that next level as well. And you can right. feel them light up. Uh, I love it. I like, love it. You feel that power, and it's like whoa. And then you can feel like people who, like you said, are just in many ways wake, waking up for the first time. Not waking up entirely, but waking up to their gifts. Totally. You know, totally. That has its own its own like spring energy. That beautiful young like young energy feel but it but it's so new and full of potential you know so oh, yes. yeah I yeah. picture some yeah. I picture some women I've connected to from the group and some of them have just told me like yeah I've just spent the majority of my life catering mm -hmm. literally I'm a catering company to other people and like so that's what feel, it's not like they've been compassionate they've been kind-hearted they've been yeah. you know awake in the sense of that you know but it's just like awakened to themselves that that is some wildflower energy yeah. Like, I, I like that. I love that energy. And so what's interesting about our relationship, I just realized me and you, is that one thing that I think allowed us, allows us to be so explorative in the astral realm is that, and also so cool with it here on earth, is that we're super uh, agile when it comes to duality. Have you noticed that with yeah. me and you? Like, we're like, okay, the group is, the group is chaotic feeling at points who's to say chaotic is not something that we can feel here on earth. Like, right. why do we have to, why do, why does the brain immediately go, okay, it's chaotic. We have to bring it in. Why? Mm -hmm. And then when things get too, like for me personally, when things get too far in the future, if you, you know, whatever, whatever, I, what's wrong with having some structure in my day? Cause that's the other yeah. side of this whole spiritual thing is like, yeah. you don't need structure. You don't, you know, just go with whatever, whatever. It's like, well, for me personally, scheduling out my day where, you know, whatever, that feels good. So I don't know. There was just, that was just like a little aside, but I feel like that that's something to, that's what our, that's one part of our conversation's personality. Yeah, totally. It dances on the duality. It's just like, it's just yeah. like what feels good, what feels better. Yeah. Well, my moon is in Virgo. And I, when I learned oh, that and learned more about, I've got to see mine. 
Yeah. I was like, dang, okay. That makes sense because the, the like more dominant part of my personality seems like it doesn't like structure, but I always have this internal like struggle with it because I actually really love structure. Like it's, it's, I love how it makes me feel. I just love, I love routine routine that feels good Mm -hmm. you know it has to feel good and so most people who know me would more identify with me as like not being structured but my like my deepest internal self I actually really value and love structure and I can bring structure into my life which has been so um, the the biggest benefit of hiring people who are helping me structure my business totally Thank God I can value it. I can pay <sighs> for it and someone can implement it for me totally. and I can maintain it well, but I don't have to be the one to come up with it. <laughs> totally. Because you know, it, <laughs> you're not in your lane when you're doing that. So it's yeah. like, why be that? I don't know. For me and you, I feel like there's, so, there's something to this series that we're doing. You know what I mean? And yeah. like, there's so, there's, there's something there that for the right person where they're at in their thing, like it's like, it's the people that comments on our videos and are like, Oh, I feel free after that conversation. It's something that only comes out of me when I talk to you. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's just this, like, there's something I'm I'm craving, like in in Los Angeles pop-ups where it's like such a thing. It's like pop-up collaboration between this dope poet and this dope, uh, I don't know, food company or whatever. And there's a pop-up and it is what it is. I'm craving that type of energy with you. Mm -hmm. I haven't yet, I haven't even told you this yet, but I haven't yet understood what that's going to be, but I'm craving just like a, boom like what is this we don't know and you don't either but it's gonna be good you know what I mean like some type of cool energy I don't know but I agree I'm feeling it too it definitely feels like something's forming and taking its own its own life even in our flow because there are people I've noticed every time we post a conversation there there are definitely people who are tracking with our exact yeah Yeah. so it's cool to it's, it's something that's urging to be like developed and informed more I feel like yes and that's why I brought up that dancing on on uh duality thing because I think that I'm just basically looking for um characteristics of like if we were a Venn diagram here's Ricky here's Amanda where do they meet in the middle if we could find the characteristics of that persona or that whatever that is what we would bring to a pop-up to a zoom pop-up to a whatever I don't even care what it is but that's that's what we would bring and that's what the value is so I agree uh, there's just so much yeah I can feel I can feel even like people having ideas about it Mm -hmm. like oh I would love to hear you guys talk about this or whatever whatever totally oh that would be so fun yeah yeah yeah. I, I love this series okay so I just upgraded my tech my 3d technology big time i got a new computer i got a new monitor for my office i found my buddy's a designer and he's he redid my website and so everything is feeling so good on the my my my, uh what do you call it my my container is feeling so good Uh and so it just makes me like alive to have these conversations then boom post it yeah so like the content now for me doesn't actually have to what am i trying to say i'm trying to say I can be more of me, which is this free flowy, like whatever, whatever the production value on the YouTube videos for me doesn't have to be that good because everything else is feeling comfortable. Totally. Yeah. You know what I mean? I kind of see that for you too. Yeah. That's a good space. I feel like I'm getting into that space too. My container is getting much better and, and like zoning into where I want it to be. And again, Kinsey, I think bringing, bringing forth the question of like, what do you want your universe to feel like? why didn't I ever ask that? You know, right. Right. It's because I didn't want to think of myself as a brand or like, I was hiding from that whole idea. I was like, no, I just say shit. And some people resonate and that's what I do. Right. Right. (laughs) Right. You're like, I can't be, I can't be too uh, successful because it's like, you know, even that is saying that, you know, just like, boom, here's my web. (laughs) (laughs) Unapologetically. That was perfect timing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. There needs to be like webs, like, on your something some some, some little nuanced yeah, spot on your website because oh, matrix man. really actually means web and mm-hmm. or womb i think it's womb but i i think there's iteration of web too it's all kind of associated in the same the same language so yeah. and that's it like the womb the matrix the web that mm. that's like what i'm that's that's the vibe of my universe so oh my god it's so cool <laughs> it, it, it is it is and we're like both taking that next thing um one call I want to do with you when the next time we're in this energy equally, because you're on the side of where, when we first met, 
you were you were starting this tantric iteration Mm -hmm. you know and when we first met i was starting ricky without the nine to five so i've seen you the whole time it seems Mm -hmm. from that point as the person leading the groups co-facilitating whereas you've seen me build my business you see me the exploratory phase even with creating the alter ego and now like as I'm starting I'm going to start having products come out you know all all kinds of things so I can't like there that's also a piece of our work right there because it's so aligned Mm -hmm. you know but so on opposite sides of things it's Mm -hmm. it's so it's so 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 it's like I I honestly would love to be like living proof of what you're talking about because like I'm like sure it resonates so why as well try it (laughs) you know what I mean exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. Down. I did when you said that for some reason I saw one of the times that Doug and I my partner and I found a whole bunch of I think another rock hound had actually like poured out their rocks or someone mm. like because they weren't all from that area but in the mountains there was just this huge pile of rocks which I wouldn't have been able to know were crystals right. but he he recognized it right away and we filled up like two buckets full and and most of it was snowflake obsidian oh wow yeah freaking beautiful and he has the table that cuts them and polishes them too and he usually leaves them mostly rough but polished but the whole reason I'm saying this is because I've been like I want to take some of these stones and like have a group of people you know what I mean like a private thing and I I, like I want to give everyone one of those stones and then I just thought well that would be a cool pop-up to do with you like we wow. don't do it around, but we do a pop up. We have like twelve people or something. And we give everyone a snowflake obsidian, so that like sets the tone for whatever we do. And like I don't know, activate some let's there. let's let's me and you get the snowflake obsidian, mm-hmm. sit with it, talk, have one of these conversations with it, and then watch that recording back. What do we learn from that recording? And then have that have that experience with other people, and they all leave yeah. with the snowflake obsidian like yes, stuff I'm like sure. that like it's cooking it's cooking it's so good I'm in yeah so, yeah I'll have to send you one send me your okay. address I'll send I will you. oh my god <laughs> that'd be the best gift okay well this is this has been so dope Amanda yeah, as always great. yeah I mean too yeah I know thank you for it thank you for it seriously yeah, all of it sure. awesome yeah. will you send me the recording too and yeah you're in the sun? okay Perfect. yes I'll share I'll share it with you um on my new computer which makes everything so much easier thank god so um okay and then we'll connect again soon and you're going live next when on your um on Monday at 11 11 in the okay, sweet. group yeah mm-hmm. okay I'll be there all right sounds good I'll see you all right thank you Amanda bye mm-hmm.